Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome to Motion Nations. And in today's video, we are going to create this. So this animation is created in After Effects using expressions only and it's very easy to create. So before I begin, if you guys are new here, then please consider subscribing and make sure to press that bell icon so that you never miss another amazing video like this. So without wasting any further ado, let's jump into After Effects and get started. Alright, so right now I'm in After Effects and this is what we are going to create today. But before we jump right into expressions, I want to show you how this technique works. So for that I have this demo comp and in this we have these three squares, red, green and blue. And let's see how this works. So first I'm going to hide the blue one because we don't need to see it for now. And let's select these two layers and press P for position. And if I hold down the Alt key and click on the position. You can see that it will give me area where I can write an expression or I can just simply reference to this property. So you can see that nothing has happened. But if I select this layer and if I move the red one, you can see that the green one will move because it is getting its position value from this parameter. So there is a function called value at time. So if I add dot value at time, you can see that we can get value of this position at any particular time. So let's say the time is at 1. So now if I quickly animate the red position and let's add a keyframe over here. Let's move it somewhere around here. And at 2 seconds, let's move it to this position. You can see that the red one will animate but the green one won't move. Because its position is defined by the value of this red layer at 1 second. So at 1 second, you can see that this red square is over here and that's why the green one will stay over here throughout the time so what if we change this to some variable so let's say time and now you can see that it is doing the same thing basically it's following the value of this red layer at every time interval and if i add a little bit of delay by simply subtracting let's say 0.5 so now you can see that it is following the red layer with a delay of 0.5 and I can play around with this delay and I can just simply change this to something like 0.2. So we can do the same thing on blue one as well. So if I select this, press P for position and let me just quickly copy this. And if I hold on the Alt key and let's click over here and if I paste it, you can see that it will also start following it. And if I add a different delay, let's set this to 0.4. So if I play back here, you can see that all the other layers are following the red square, but with a little bit of delay. So we are going to use this expression and we are going to first refine it a lot so that we can create something like this. So for that, I'm going to quickly create a new composition. So let's call this main width and height will be 1920 by 1080. Just click on OK. And now for this example, I'm going to use the ellipse tool. So let's select the ellipse tool and I'm going to quickly click anywhere and if you hold down the shift it will create a perfect circle something like this and let's quickly align it to the center of this composition and if you're not able to see the align panel then you can go under windows and from here you can enable it now let me just quickly select this and i'm going to change its stroke color to red and also let's increase the stroke size to something like 10 and make sure the fill is set to none now I'm going to select this layer, press Ctrl D to duplicate it and let's select the bottom layer and I'm going to call this leader. So all the other layers will be following this. So let's call this follower and let me just quickly select this and let's change its color to something like orange to distinguish these layers. And now we can select these layers and let's search for size and let's play around with the size of these. So let's set the size of the leader to 150. And the follower, we are going to make it obviously a little bit bigger. So let's set this to 300. And also I'm going to change its stroke to something like 3. And let's change its color to white. So now you can see we have these two circles. And we are going to add bunch of different copies like in this example. But we don't want to like duplicate it then just simply scale this up something like this manually. For that we are going to use expression. So let me just quickly again select this and let's search for size and we are going to get this value using the expression. So if I hold on the alt key or option key for on Mac and click on this, we can add expression over here and first I'm going to pick with this size just like this and if I click anyway, you can see that it will get the size value from this. 
So if I increase or decrease it, you can see that this value will change according to it. Now we want the followers to be a little bit bigger than the leader. So we can add some value to this. So let's set this to 150. And since this is an array of two values and we want to add array over here as well. So let's add S and over here let's define the array. So S comma S. And if I and you will notice that it will give us an error. So let's fix this error. And the easy fix for this is you can see that we are referencing this size value. So we don't need the array over here. We are just going to reference the first value. So I'm going to just add the index zero for it. And now you can see that we have the circle. And there is one small problem. If I select this and press Ctrl D, you can see that all the layers have the same scale because we are just adding 150 to the scale of this leader value but instead what we are going to do is we are going to get the scale value from the layer which is below it so for that i am going to type index plus one so now what this will do is it will select for example we have this layer it will get the value of the scale from the layer which is below it so it will add 150 to this. So over here we have 150. This is 300. And if I select this, press Ctrl D, you can see that all the layers will have the scale, which is slightly bigger than the layer, which is below. So this is how we are going to create a bunch of different copies. But for now, let's focus on this one single layer. And now let's select the leader. And on this one, I'm going to add a couple of sliders. So which we will use later on. So Let's search for slider control and let's drag it onto the leader and let's drag one more copy. So now I'm going to select the slider controller and I'm going to quickly rename this to delay because we are going to add the delay parameter and let's call this delay strength. So we are going to make use of these two parameters. So let's see how we can do that. So first I'm going to select these layers and let's press P for position. And we are going to add the expressions to this position. So first, if you hold on the Alt or Option key if you are on Mac. So let me just increase this. And if I click over here, let's first reference these values. So first I'm going to add a variable called delay. And I'm going to quickly reference this to the delay parameter. And let's add another variable for delay strength. And let's reference the second parameter over here. Now we are going to add the same this position expression over here. So for this, I'm going to just simply and if it gives any error, just ignore it for now. And after that, I'm going to simply add the position expression, which is this. And again, at the end, we are going to write dot value at time. And instead of passing any parameters, I'm just simply going to pass T variable, which we are going to define in a second. So let's define T. So if I go back over here, so over here you can see that we set the time value to be time minus 0.2 and we are going to do the same thing but with these sliders. So let's set this to time minus and instead of subtracting any particular value, I'm going to simply subtract the delay and let's multiply with the strength and let's type delay strength and let's add semicolon to these and now you can see that there is no error and we have this expression and if i quickly set this value to something like one and one now if i add some animation to the position let's add a keyframe over here and let's move it to somewhere around here you can see that we have added a little bit of delay and we can just play around with these values let's set this to 0.5 and let's set this to 0.5 as well so now you can see we are getting the pretty much the same effect which we had over here. But there is a one small problem. So if I select this layer and if I press Ctrl D and duplicate it a bunch of different times. And now if I play back here you can see that all the other layers are moving together instead of having a particular delay. And reason for that is so if I go back to the demo you can see that over here we have added a little bit of offset in the delay. So you can see that over here it's 0.2. And on this layer, we have the 0.4. So we have to define a offset of each layer. So let's quickly do that. So first I'm going to select these and let's delete them. And now let's focus on this. 
So we are going to offset the delay value based upon the index of these layers. So for that, I'm going to select this layer and let's add a slider controller and let's just simply rename this to layer offset. And after that, I'm going to add an expression to this. So if I hold down the alt key and click on the slider and now I'm going to write the expression. So we are going to offset the layer based upon the leader. So for that, we need the index of this leader layer. So let me just quickly pick whip this position and I'm going to just simply delete all of these and let's just type dot index. So that means we are getting the index value over here. So which is two. And now we are going to subtract the index of the current layer. So now if I select this and if I press Ctrl D and duplicate it, you can see that all of these layers will have a different value of layer offset depending upon the leader and their index as well. So this is basically what we want. And now we can delete these layers. So now we are going to use this layer offset into our expression. So I'm going to set the indicator over delay strength because we are going to add the offset into the strength. So after that, I can just simply pick whip this slider and over here, we are going to divide these two values. So let's add a division over here. It's just like this. So now you can see that we have this animation and if I select the layer and press Ctrl D bunch of different times. So now if I play back here, you can see that now our layers are following the leader with a little bit of delay and we can fix the delay by simply selecting this leader and let's change the delay values. So it's completely up to you. You can play around with these parameters and let's increase the delay strength. Let's set this to something like 300 and let's set the delay to something like 20. So now if I play back here, you can see that all the other layers are following our leader with a little bit of delay. Now this delay, you can obviously control using this sliders, something like this. So there you go. This is how you can create this. And instead of using the keyframes for position, we can just simply add the wiggle expression over here. So let me just quickly hold down the alt key and let's type wiggle and I'm going to set this to something like 0 0.5 comma 500 and I'm going to add multiple copies over here. So now if I play back here, you can see we have added this and we can just simply play around with the delay value and let's set this to 50. So now you can see we have created this really interesting animation. If you want, you can play around with the scale value as well. So I can just simply search for size and we can animate the size. You can also use wiggle expression over here, but for now I'm going to just quickly animate this size randomly. Something like this. And we can select these, press F9 to ease them and we can just go into the graph and let's change the graph to look something like this so now if i play back here you can see we have added some really nice scale animation to this now if you want to get this look then what you can do is just simply create a new composition let's call this camera and let's drag our main comp over here and in this one we are going to add a camera layer let's click on ok Let's make it 3D and we're going to select the camera tool and let's give it a really nice angle, something like this. And you will notice that the edges are being cut off. So we can fix that by simply enabling the collapse transformation by clicking over here. And now we have to go inside the comp and let's select all of these layers and let's turn them to 3D as well. So now if I go back to the camera, so here you can see we have the really nice 3D look. And there's one more thing that you can do. If you want, you can just select the layer and press camera layer and press AA and let's enable the depth of field and you can increase the aperture. So if I play back here, you can see that we have added a really nice depth of field effect to this. And if you want more copies, then you can just simply go inside the main comp and you can just simply keep on duplicating this and it will add more copies to the example. So there you go. This is how you can create these kind of animations. And if you want, you can play around with the these sliders and you can get different looks.
however you want just like this so i hope you learned something from this video and if you have any queries or question then you can ask in the comments below and if you want to support my channel then you can check out my patreon page link for that is in the description as well so with that being said my name is abhishek and i'll see you in the next one